We need to talk about those new Chinese AI models called DeepSeek, because the story is pretty insane. You know, if you want to build powerful AI models, you need powerful AI chips. And there's basically one company that produces them, and it's an American company called NVIDIA. Now, since those chips are so valuable today, the US government prohibits NVIDIA from selling those chips to Chinese companies. So you might be thinking, well, how the hell did they manage then to create a model that is more powerful than open AIs? That's where it gets interesting. So they could put their hands on a very limited number of NVIDIA chips, but not enough to create a powerful model. So what they did is they made some insane technical innovation to make training of those models extremely more efficient, which means that they used like one hundredth of the resources that OpenAI or Microsoft or Google used to create AI models. But you know what is even more insane? It's a huge F off to a lot of American companies. They created those amazing AI models and then they open sourced them, which means that they told the world, hey, not only I will tell you exactly how we did this so you can do this again, we're also going to give you the output. We're going to give you the code of these AI models so you can do whatever you want with them. Which basically means that now the value of a lot of OpenAI models has gone down a lot because there's a free alternative that is better. China is innovating like crazy. So these days, everybody's talking about DeepSeek. You possibly, if you're in an investment or technology world, have heard about uh, breakthroughs by this Chinese company. It's actually a side project of a Chinese quant firm and uh, squeezing some GPUs. But in this video, I also want to tell you a little bit more what I think this might bring to the automotive industry, how it relates to NEO, and make a couple of predictions because here is where I want to start off. I made the prediction a couple of months ago, more than half a year, that uh, because of the Biden chips, sanctions, bans, and so on, I do think the Chinese will actually focus on algorithms and efficiencies of how GPUs that are still coming into the country can be used more efficiently, but also on the software side, how it can just be written in a way that it's more efficient and a better use of resources. Okay, so that was my prediction. We saw some first things happening like, um, you know, Stanford University uh, people copying some Chinese LM LMM code and so on. And, uh, you know, that was kind of you know, going to the right direction, which should ultimately uh, result in what we now see and with this breakthrough by DeepSeek. And um, I'm not going to explain the whole thing about DeepSeek. I mean, there's lots of AI experts out there. The fact is that this is an open source model that is beating OpenAI in many benchmarks. Um, it is more efficient. Um, yes, there are rumors out there that they are still hiding some GPOs out there, but the fact is, you know, these models are running on extremely cheap and uh, less in power intensive hardware, like even your phone and stuff. So. I mean, there is a real innovation and tech breakthrough no matter what. So keep the cope aside. This has big, big impacts in my opinion. Now back to my predictions back then. I said for one, they will come after efficiency and demonstrate that. And then second, they will bring out actually their own chips. Now that we haven't seen yet, or at least not at a big scale, you know, we've got the, the Huawei Mate coming out and some, some AI chips um, from Huawei, but also, you know, Neo working on its own chips. But I will later on make a couple more prediction, predictions. Uh, but what I wrote in this LinkedIn post back then was, uh, you know, that's the real danger for the West here or for the monopolies for the US companies and so on. They've invested so much into keeping the monopoly for an AI in a sense, uh, investing so much in GPUs um, and also um, thought the Chinese would never be able to catch up because they put the bans on, on Chinese company, right? And I said, that's likely to not happen. And now we see the first pick, uh, I think, um, you know, mind boggling facts here with, with uh, DeepSeek happening. I made a tweet the other day last week on that this really, really breaks the narrative that um, there is a, you know, the investment narrative, I should say, that the more capex you are investing into AI, like chips, infrastructure, compute, um, the better are your 
probabilities that you will become a leader of AI in a sense, because DeepSeek showed that uh, there are huge efficiency gains to be made until uh, up to one hundredth of the cost and uh, maybe also the energy efficiency, that efficiency that's bringing with it. And so this whole narrative is crumbling, uh, which we've seen to build up the whole Max 7 trade. Uh, like, you know, all of these companies like Microsoft, maybe even Tesla, NVIDIA and so on, are making up the, uh, the, the Nasdaq and the SPY and so on, and um, really driven on this hype, this mania, this excitement about uh, the future of AI and driven by the fact that, you know, they can buy up all of the NVIDIA chips out there and they have the most powerful compute clusters. Now, suddenly, um, CapEx invested in that looks pretty stupid, doesn't it? Uh, there are billions sunk while a Chinese competitor can, can bring the same results for millions and not having the access to um, the same resources, right? That's what DeepSeek is showing. And how does it translate into the EV industry and uh, you know our investments, for example, in NEO? I think there's a big chance here, to be honest, um, because I think what it shows here, it's not only about American company. I don't want to make this a us versus STEM type of thing, okay? I'm just trying to read technology and how things are going to unfold. And I found this narrative about investment in CapEx so stupid in a way, because if you think about the chips, they don't immediately return profitability and results on a financial metric, uh, but they are super expensive. And so Wall Street really chasing this trade shows me that um, they didn't go a lot of thought into that. And now DeepSeek really uh, you know, shows that the emperor is having no clothes, right? Um, I mean, I don't say there is not a merit to owning those chips, and I'm not saying that chips can be used for training those models and whatever. Um, there, I, I still think lots of innovation and leadership is coming out of the US, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's shown what is possible and how the Chinese companies are capable, maybe not despite sanctions, but because of the sanctions, uh, they are, you know, being creative, they're investing in brains instead of compute power. And I think that shows to be very, very effective. And now for the automotive industry, you know, it's not only the American companies, as I said, there is also, for example, Xiaomi recently uh, trading higher on the news that are buying more GPUs. So it's also the Chinese companies, whenever there is an announcement that they are investing big in infrastructure, the share price rises. And that's, you know, counter intuitive, if you will, because that is some asset that is depreciating fast on the balance sheet, plus money gone and pulverized for until we see real outcomes that are actually transferring into financial profitability, right? So also Xiaomi is riding that hype. It's not only um, the companies in the US. And now for NEO, the interesting part here is, I think NEO has one of the best teams or personnel around AI algorithms, again, on the software side, like the, the true um, capabilities that when it comes down maybe also to efficiency and effectiveness of the the software and what it is capable to do with Ren Xiaoxing and his team. I think it's, you know, again, he's the guy who's been publishing the papers in the beginning about resonance and stuff. He really knows his stuff. He might be something like these quants from DeepSeek that are real geeks and are thinking in a new and fresh way, how to unlock efficiencies. Yes, we don't see that right now. Uh, may, just maybe in some internal tests, sometimes we've got some interesting NEO videos about how their autonomous driving is um, you know, behaving. And my point here is I, I'm not going to say that NEO is going to be a leader. I'm just saying for my prediction going forward, I think NEO might surprise in this regard. I'm expecting that NEO will hold a, something like an AI day this year, uh, which might go a different path than what we've seen so far from the industry, like saying, like Xiaomi, like Tesla investing into GPUs. No, instead, maybe it might be going another way and working with a new approach, thinking about the algorithms instead. And then the second missing piece in my earlier prediction was about the chips. The chips are still to come, right? 
And NEO, we know, is working on that. And uh, ET9 launched with um, its own um, self-made chip, five nanometer chip. If it's existing, you know, we still need to see the benchmarks and stuff, but it's been announced, but it's coming, right? NEO is, is working on that. I'm just saying we might see more surprises from the China side. I don't want to make this a NEO thing. I'm expecting Huawei as well and maybe some other Chinese companies to also come out with the chips part on top of that. I know that uh, the in-car chip is not used for, um, you, know, uh, you know, it's not a data warehouse chip in order to um, uh, squeeze those AI models, but um, it's, it's still the hardware and the software side, and we should fully expect the Chinese to catch up with all of that, if not even front run. And lots of people have never thought China would be able to do that. And I just want to bring it out there what this means for not only the industry, the EV industry, but everything like this has been a huge game changer in a sense it's breaking up the ai monopoly that was held by the us that was kind of secured by capital by capital investment plus export restrictions i think investors boardroom members and so on will now start asking the questions why have we invested billions if there's somebody else doing that and i think we should be you know really um positively surprised as well like this is good for the world that everybody you know deep seek i know it's their deep seek model but you can basically download it and run it on as your own local software and you can play with it because it's open source and you know this is a huge benefit and democratization of um, technology and to the whole world it's making ai multipolar instead of a u.s hegemon and a unipolar world in which somebody owns AI and is charging it on huge premiums. And that way it's even deflationary <laughs> in a technology sense. And I know some investors out there don't like that and for that very reason don't like to invest in China because it's deflationary. But now this inflation is coming to the US. Thanks for watching.